Heinrich's safety pyramid, proposed in 1931, has been often used to show the importance of behavior-based safety. My name is Risa Yosia Sunindio, and today I'll talk about what Heinrich's safety pyramid is and give my views on its value and also shortcomings. Herbert William Heinrichs was an assistant superintendent of Travelers Insurance Company. So in 1931, he published a book with a title, Industrial Accident Prevention, A Scientific Approach. In this book, he put forward Heinrichs Law, which is also known as Heinrichs Pyramid or Accident Triangle. The pyramid essentially indicates that in a group of 330 incidents or accidents, there will be 300 near misses, 29 minor injuries, and one fatality, as you can see from the uh, graphic here. Besides the, the, the pyramid, Heinrichs also proposed an accident causation theory called the domino theory. Uh, here, he said an accident, accident sequence is like a causal chain of events uh, represented as dominoes that topple in a, in a chain reaction. So the fall of the first domino leads to the fall of the second one and so on. In the theory, there are five dominoes. The first one, ancestry and the worker social environment, which impact uh, the workers' skills, beliefs and traits of character, and thus the way in which they perform tasks. Heinrichs interestingly also wrote that recklessness, stubbornness, and other undesirable traits of character may be passed along through inheritance. The second domino, the workers' carelessness or personal faults, which uh, lead them to pay insufficient attention uh, to the task. The third one, an unsafe act or a mechanical uh, and physical hazard. So basically, it is about a worker's mistake or a technical equipment failure. Number four is the accident itself. And finally, domino number five is uh, injury or loss, which is one of the outcomes of the accident. So based on this domino theory, and of course the pyramid as well, Heinrich concluded that 88% of accidents are caused by unsafe acts or unsafe behaviors, 10% by unsafe machines, and 2% being unavoidable. So what is the problem with the pyramid and also the domino theory? So the first one, what he is saying is that an unsafe act, fault of a person, or the worker's personal culture are solely to blame for injury in the workplace. So with this belief, the, the preventive efforts are directed at the worker rather than on the operating system in which the work is done. So this thought indicates that a process or a company is not responsible for workers' unsafe cultures and unsafe practices. The second one, in a sense, it misleads people into thinking that if they focus on near misses, then major incidents will automatically go away. But that's not the case in reality. Some companies, they have low injury rates, but then they have suffered a very serious incidents uh, in the past. Minor injuries in, in many industries uh, have steadily declined, but major in injuries have uh, stubbornly remained relatively the same. And then the third one, the theory also adopts a linear and, and a mechanical model of causality, which is perhaps appropriate in the, in the olden time where systems were simple and more predictable, but such a linearity 
was inappropriate in complex systems, especially today, where accidents are generally caused by many interacting, uh, partially competing, and unpredictable factors. So, is it still valid today? Despite what I said earlier, uh, it's, it's Heinrich's pyramid and, and domino theory is still valuable today. First, it brings attention to safety, which has been neglected, especially in the early uh, 1900s. And then the second one, uh, it uh, encourages people and companies uh, to focus on incident reporting and investigation, including near misses. So they can learn from any incident, and as a result, they also can improve uh, their safety performance and prevent uh, those those incidents from happening uh, uh, in, in the future. The third one, it shows the importance of workers' awareness and also accountability. So everyone should be accountable to safety. Everyone should participate in the implementation of health and safety measures. And it shows the importance of uh, workers' awareness as well to reduce unsafe acts and behavior uh, in the workplace. And the last one, despite Heinrich's uh, saying that unsafe act is the, the main uh, or, or 88% of incidents uh, is caused by unsafe act, but Heinrich also said uh, this thing, management has the best opportunity and ability to prevent accidents occurrence and therefore should assume the responsibility. A quick concluding remark. First, we need to understand the context of Heinrich's pyramid. It was proposed in 1931, when safety was still in its infancy. And the second one, we need to apply the principles or Heinrich's pyramid principles in today's context. Heinrich said 88% of accidents are caused by unsafe behaviors of workers. If we accept this number blindly, this may, may affect our thinking and attitude. So when an accident happened, for example, then we, uh, deep down, we believe that, okay, most likely a worker or workers are responsible for the accident. And then we tend to neglect the bigger picture, uh, the management systems and the work environment where the workers operate. So that's what I mean by applying the principles in today's context. Understand that today's work environment is much more complex. So we can't just simply uh, uh, identify one source of uh, accident, but we need to see that there are many factors, interrelated factors, competing factors, which can cause the accident. Thank you.